Welcome to this study. This first movie is what is known as the Great Three Days. It's also referred to as the Great Three which is three 24 hour periods which are at the heart of the Easter celebration. There's this evening feast of the Holy Trinity, this day also called Morn Day Thursday. The Latin man of Latin men to command and love one Tomorrow comes Friday, Holy Saturday, and the great vision of the Easter, and finally Easter Sunday. The tree of the Lord memorializes the suffering, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this service we will offer foot worship. As we follow what Jesus teaches in the gospel, we want them to come forward to participate in this. We have one station on the, uh, the chancel staff, and for those who have uh, mobility issues, go to the station here. Please come forward to the foot marshal as you can. And communion, we offer bread and gluten free wafers as well as wine and green peas and peas. Please let you hear and serve it all with your uh, your needs. Also this night, as you can see by the chalices on the altar, some of our youngest members will be making the first time. At the end of the liturgy, we will hear Psalm 22 as the chancel there is script of the church. Finally, the procession of Psalms will be made. The service continues. Friday night and then Saturday night. We keep those in the old days. We begin our worship as we now listen to the prayer. that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this day, let's confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on this, the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor, neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it into two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn with fire. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down with every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from human to animal. And all the deities of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be the sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he had broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already decided that Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, would betray Jesus. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from supper, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For Jesus knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, put on his robe, and reclined again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one of his feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, slaves are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in God's own self, and will glorify him at once. Little children... I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Judeans, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, o Christ. You may be seated. And will our members who are receiving their first communion tonight please join me down here? Come on, let's, let's sit down here. How's this? This work? Yeah. Okay. Microphone is on. Okay, tonight is the second night of Passover for our Jewish friends.
And you know who the most important people are at a Passover celebration? Who's most important? No, not, not Jesus. Of the people in the room that you can see, who would be the most important people at the Passover celebration? Would it be the old folks? The young folks? Who do you think? The old folks. No, it's not the old folks. The most important people at the Passover celebration are the youngest folks. You knew that. Okay, good. You're, you're the smartest one here. The youngest folks are the most important because they start everything. The youngest people have to ask the question, why is tonight different from every other night? And only after the youngest people, like, like you guys, after they ask that question, only then can the adults begin to tell the story of Passover and why the night is different from every other night. So we're going to do the same thing. You are the most important people. Except I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to ask you, why is the night different from every other night? What is different that's going to happen tonight? Can you tell me? What tonight is going to happen that's different? I see a bunch of chalices on the altar. Why are they there? Can you tell me? You, you, Douglas, you can tell me. Who, who made those? The, us. us. Why did you make those chalices? Because we're doing our first communion. Tell me again so they can hear you. Because we're doing the first, our first communion. You're doing your first communion. That's one reason why this night is very different from every other night. You're doing your first communion. What is communion? Can you tell me what is communion? When you drink the wine and bread. When you drink the wine and, and eat, eat bread. the bread. Okay. Why do we do that? Why do we drink wine and eat bread? You remember. Guess why? Come on. Who, who told us to do that? God. God. God told us? Yeah. God told us. Okay. Any, anybody else tell us to do that? Who was... Who was at the table who said, do this? Who? The teacher. Jesus, yeah. It was Jesus who told us to do this, to eat this bread and drink this wine. Okay, great. Who was with Jesus when he said, eat this bread and drink this wine? Do you remember? Who was at the table with him? God was there. Who was sitting around the table? Who? Twelve people. Twelve people. Who were those twelve people? Um. Come on. Who, who were those twelve people? Yeah. Huh? Were they his friends? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He had his friends sitting around the table with him. And he told them to eat bread and wine. Okay. So this night is different from every other night because tonight we remember that Jesus gathered his friends together and he said, eat this bread and drink this wine. And you do this, why? Oh, you guys are so good. Why? To remember God and 
in Jesus. Right. We do this to remember. We do this to remember Jesus and all that Jesus has done for us. You guys are good. This night is different from every other night. Because remember, tonight, Jesus said, eat this bread and drink this wine. And whenever you do it, you do it to remember me. And we are so happy that tonight, for the first time, you will eat the bread and drink the wine. And with us, we'll remember Jesus. Okay. Thank you. You guys did good. I'm going to let you go back to your pews. Ah, gets harder to do. So why is this night different from every other night? This is the second night of Passover. That question is asked again. Why is this night different from every other night? Certainly we can appreciate the wisdom of our, our children, our first communicants. But there's more. And I would suggest we would begin with one word. And the word is remember. Remember is a very important word tonight. As the kids pointed out in the celebration of the Holy Communion, Jesus says, do this to remember. Remember. And we know in Hebrew, that the word for remember is more than recalling a, a cognitive function. It's more than remembering that one plus one must equal two. Remember is to re-participate in, to represent those things we remember. Remember is a dynamic reality. And tonight, we remember. We remember four stories. Four stories which are foundational to who we are, what we believe, what we understand God to be about. Four stories. And we've heard three of them already. The first story is the story of Passover. We remember that God freed the people of Israel from bondage in Egypt. He brought them out from slavery. And we remember, we remember Moses, we remember the ten plagues, the frogs and the locusts and the boils and all the other stuff. We remember that night when you slayed the, the lamb and the blood was marked on the doorpost and the angel of death passed over and you had to eat hastily because there wasn't time for the leaven to rise and the bread was flat and you had to get out of there because the Egyptians were at your heels and you had to get through the Red Sea to the land in the wilderness where we lived absolutely dependent upon the grace of God. We remember that. We remember that our God freed and oppressed people. We remember that God loves those at the margins, the poor, the powerless, the oppressed. We remember that is our God. And we remember that we too are called to, to love the poor, the oppressed, the powerless. And in the Hebrew tradition, there are three figures that represent those who are at the margin. The widow, the orphan, and the, the stranger, the foreigner, the sojourner. The person who doesn't fit in. And those we are called especially to care for, to serve. We remember that. Second story we heard was the story of the, the Last Supper, the institution of Holy Communion. We hear it from St. Paul as he writes to the people of Corinth. So in the context in which he is writing, he's writing about community. 
a community meal. He's saying to the people of Corinth, bring in your abundance. Bring in what you, ha what you have to share. And out of the ab abundance, everyone will be fed. fed. Not, there'll be no one hungry. Not the poor, not the rich. Everybody will have. And out of the abundance, we will take the gifts of bread and wine and use these gifts to remember what Jesus has commanded us to do. To remember him. We are by definition a community which gathers around a meal. We are a community which gathers around the table. That's who we are. And when Pastor Bowman or I or our, our communion visitors go out to a nursing home, to a hospital, to a shut-in, to take communion. It's never private community. It's, it's never individual communion. It's just an extension of the whole community, what we do at this table, taken out to feed the world. All are welcome to receive. God's hospitality extends beyond the walls. But it begins at the table. Third story we remember is the gospel text. Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. On this night, Monday, Thursday, at Passover, in the upper room, Jesus takes the humble role of a servant to Wash the dust of the streets, the dust of the day, off the feet of the servants. And he's doing this as what we call now modeling behavior. And he says that explicitly, as I have done this to you, so you should do this for one another. You should serve one another. Self-sacrificially, serve and care for each other. And finally he comes down to the point, he says, love one another as I have loved you. We remember that. Jesus said that. And that command, that great command, really was the spark of evangelism in the early church. Because as the Hellenistic world looked at these small gatherings of Christians and saw how they cared for the, the widow, the orphan, the sick, the elderly, the marginalized, as they saw this, they said to each other, See how they love each other. What they were seeing in the Christian community, they didn't see in the rest of the world. The way in which people remembered and cared for one another. And the Hellenistic world was attracted to what the church demonstrated. And the church grew. And we remember that. We remember. The fourth story we remember, we will not hear tonight. It will be read tomorrow night. But we will see that story being lived out, acted out in the chancel. As we strip the altar, as we empty the chancel of all the fancy stuff, we're remembering and reenacting Jesus' arrest, humiliation, and the torture he experienced up until that point on Friday when he was nailed to the Roman lynching tree. We remember that. And we remember that our God is a God who does not fear death. Our God took on human form, flesh and blood, so that that God could experience everything we experience, even death that we might know that nothing, nothing separates us from that God. As Paul said in Romans, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, not even death. And we remember that. Remember that God does not fear our death. So why is this night different from every night, every other night? It has to do with the word remembering. 
making re-present the great stories of our faith, of our tradition, those foundational stories. And taking those stories and carrying them now into Friday and to Saturday and into all the other stories which we will hear as we live our Lord's passion and death and resurrection together in these next three days. We remember so that we know who our God is. We remember so that we might know who we are. Amen. this night we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us we who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant our commitment to this loving service is signified in the washing of feet following the example our Lord gave us on the night before his death
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of love, as your son washed the feet of his disciples, he revealed his undying love that would lead him to the cross. May this simple act be a sign of our love for one another and our call to serve our neighbors and all those in need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we begin our final steps towards the cross, we pray for the church and for all in need. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. Let us pray for peace throughout the world. Let us pray for an increase of justice in our land. Let us pray for a spirit of concord throughout our society. Let us pray for the hungry, the homeless, the unemployed. Let us pray for our community of faith. Let us pray for all who are sick or suffering. Let us pray for all who today will die. Let us pray for the desires of our hearts. Let us thank God for all who have gone before us in the faith. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please greet one another.
Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you send to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your dominion and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. All are invited to come forward to receive the bread and a cup, hearing the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are practicing, practicing Eucharistic fasting and just wish a blessing, please cross your arms. And of course, this evening, we do welcome some of our youngest to the altar for their first communion. 
You may be seated. body of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you.
Please stand as you are able. Embodied God, at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet, you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot herd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. 
A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O、oh、Lord, do not be far away. O、oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you, you who fear the Lord. Praise Him, all you offspring of Jacob. Glorify Him. Stand in awe of Him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay. Before those who fear Him, the poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek Him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations. Shall worship before Him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and He rules over all the nations. To Him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down before Him. Shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him; future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Thank、you